Hi everyone, um, I'm Jun, I'm a gra finishing graduate student at UC Berkeley. Uh, uh, Pepperomia is like one of those texts uh, that um, I didn't start out my PhD working on and then uh, kind of really just fell into the deep end with it. I remember some of my earliest kind of field notes when I was collecting insects or spiders on West Maui was some weird Pepperomia was just hanging around in, in some of the sites and, and it's, it's, it's great to finally, you know, actually do something about them that I realize that they, um, not very much has been done about them. So today I'll be looking at the biogeographic history and, and a little bit of evolutionary history of the Peperomia of the Pacific. So just a short introduction about Peperomia. Uh, it's within uh, um, the family Hyperaceae, so uh, it's a close relative of black pepper, it's sister to Sororaceae, and, and they form a clade that is then sister to Arisodokiaceae. Um, there's about uh, 1,600 species worldwide, most of them neotropical, uh, but you know, uh, the, the paleotropics is especially uh, quite interestingly depopulated in the genus. It is typically herbaceous, um, but has a variety of different habits from terrestrial to epiphytic, uh, but does not quite get the same um, disparity in growth form as in Piper. Um, yeah, and uh, for people who are not uh, familiar with this genus, uh, you, you tend to have, um, like the pipers you have here, you have the stamens and that little black colored dot that's the stigma and then you have these pelvic bracts and the, the flowers tend to be on inflorescences that we call spikes um, and the fruit is a very, very small drupaceous, uh, um, uh, it's a drupaceous fruit. So just a little bit of introduction to this genus. Um, uh, there was a recent uh, taxon taxonomic uh, revision of the entire group that split this entire genus into 14 subgenera. And uh, while there were very few morphological synapomorphies that kind of group each of the taxa, uh, they, they can be largely delimited by a combination of traits. So some examples include uh, uh, these species in Tildenia, which has a, a nice in situ radiation <coughs> in, in, in the Andes. Uh, you have uh, the paniculate forms, Pepperoni freezeri, which, uh, which is quite big in horticultural trade, and then you have other things like Pellucida, which is a, a, a pantropical weed, and things like radiated plants, in this case the watermelon peperonia um, within this other uh, group of the Amati So just, a, just, an, just to give you like a sense of what the, the diversity um, of the group will like. However, the uh, peperonia in the Pacific, all, they only come, they only derive from two main subgenera. So one of them is actually this genus uh, Pseudocopula, so-called so because the fruits have this um, uh, Pseudocopula over here, which is rather sticky and aids in the external kind of attachment to uh, birds and maybe even mammals. Um, so this is only one of the two, sub, two of the, uh, the subgenera that have actually made it out from the neotropics. Um, and interestingly, in the Pacific, we have this one species, Peperomia uh, tetraphylla, which has uh, somehow colonize all, all the big continents where there are tropical areas. So Africa, um, Pacific, and I think South America as well. The other, the other subgenus is uh, Micropiper. Um, and Micropiper is uh, somewhat characterized by these uh, papillose kind of fruits that have sticky acidics that also uh, presumably aid in the attachment to birds. Um, and there is a massive radiation in the Pacific, which I'll talk about. Uh, and, uh, uh, and with a smaller kind of radiation in Madagascar slash Africa. So <coughs> one particularly widespread species is Peperomia blanda, and this is the species distribution of, the, of this one uh, species, maybe species complex. And so when we started out, we were hoping to get a lot more sampling of Micropiper as well as Peperomia blanda from across the Pacific. So towards the, on, on the right hand side of these slashes is the number of species for those individual island groups and on the left is the amount that we actually sampled. Um, uh, we especially tried to sample uh, uh, intensively Hawaii, um, partly because the taxonomy had been uh, recently reworked, but we do know that there is another very big, so possibly uh, ra uh, radiation of um, Peperomia in Fiji, uh, which I'm hoping to kind of continue work on. Um, but we, uh, but the taxonomy has been based on single specimens and have not had much um, uh, recollection. So um, that's going to be like coming up, I guess, in the next few years. Um, 
So the main question is how has dispersal shaped heteromia diversity in the Pacific? Um, what are the biogeographic sources of this radiation? Um, what are the routes of dispersal within the Pacific? Um, how is the widespread heteromia blunder related to um, these various island lineages? Do you find heteromia blunder on Hawaii's sister to the Hawaiian radiation? Uh, and, and so on. What is the timing of this radiation? And lastly, uh, get some clarity on the origin of the Hawaiian taxa, which is like one of the top 10 angiosperm radiations on the island. So I'm going to skip through this um, because we just did genome skimming. But one thing that we noted was that the Pacific taxa had a doubling in chromosome number to the, uh, to the mainland uh, base number of 11. So this is kind of uh, well known since Scottsburg. I think he, he kind of first uh, noted that. Um, and so when we were doing our genome skimming, we were highly uh, cognizant of that fact and tried to be conservative with the amount of flexing. And if you want to know more, um, I, I, can, uh, I can give you more details about that. And so this is the typical library preparation. And our bioinformatics, we basically use a reference guide assembly to a hyperchloroplast. And then I wrote a bunch of custom scripts to extract out the annotations um, using that um, reference chloroplast. Um, so here is the phylogeny. Um, it's based off of uh, just protein coding genes from the pleistone, 65,000 base pairs, uh, total alignment. We got really, really good um, coverage, well, average on 60x for uh, 136 uh, taxa samples that we actually multiplied. So it was pretty good uh, for just one run. Um, and some of the big things to note is that the tetraphylas that we um, that I have sampled from multiple different localities uh, were sister to mainland pseudocopula. So it was like, poof, okay. So the subgenus uh, classification seems to be um, seems to be fine. And here's an example of a, of a mainland pseudocopula. You can really see uh, they have this really strange habit of having four leaves per whorl. Um, and uh, yeah, it seems, seems to fit that. So the peperomia tetraphylla might be an independent colonization of the Pacific. The other thing that we found, um, and we'll be working a lot more to try to resolve these clades with more data, is that uh, there were basically three really big clades um, in the Pacific. Um, the first one, clade A, is consists, consists of taxa in, in the Pacific, Asia, and Africa. Uh, clade B, surprisingly, was almost completely composed of blunders. Um, so none of the blunders were actually sister to any of those Hawaiian endemic um, lineages. Uh, clay B itself was sister to a Central American species, whereas the, the clay that contained A and B was sister to another sub, to a South American species. So you know one of the things that uh, Warren was emphasizing is that we definitely need a lot more uh, mainland um, uh, uh, sampling to, to really split them apart. Um, and then. The cool thing here is that we have another clade C over here that which is composed uh, entirely of Hawaiian and Marquesan um, species, that it's sister to a different Central American species. Um, and so uh, it looks like we have uh, three separate colonizations of the Pacific, um, which is pretty neat. Uh, so clade C represents a, a third colonization of the Asian Pacific. Okay. So, and within this clade C, there was also some taxa that were in the Marquesa. So it looks like, as, as Warren kind of um, uh, demonstrated or, or showcased in his opening talk, uh, that you know, Hawaii can, even despite its relative isolation, uh, can serve as a biogeographic source to other parts in the Pacific. And what, one, of the, one of the biggest implications, and I think I was really surprised by this, was that Hawaii was colonized up to four times Right, first by petro, uh, Peperomia tetraphylla, the second by a, a blunder, uh, and uh, and uh, a separate two times that led to a, radi a radiation of the first one, uh, equivalent to clade C over here, gave rise to a radiation of seven species, whereas this other Hawaiian clade within clade A gave rise to what is composed of like 15 species. So this is, um, and you know, like from preliminary. Um, kind of morphological observations, it does look like that, um, that the species in, in this clade on the left are a little bit more slender, a little bit less robust, they have longer kind of spikes, whereas the one over here, you can see there's a greater degree of morphological variability, although they tend to be a little bit more robust. 
So one of the big things that we're going to be looking at is whether there is a lot of niche differentiation between these two different uh, plates one for y. I think that would be pretty easy. Another thing to, to note is that many of these, uh, the crown ages of, 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 of Hawaii tend to be about or younger than the, than the age of the oldest island, the oldest current high island on Hawaii, so on the Hawaiian archipelago, Kauai. Um, but the stem ages of many of the of the Pacific plates is substantially older than that of the age of the current islands. Um, and that might be because, you know, there might be extinction bottlenecks as islands um, kind of grow and then erode through time. Um, and so when there are periods of few available islands, there is uh, huge extinction bottlenecks. Um, and as new islands form, they can then be recolonized from, uh, from, 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 from islands where they, where they actually still persist. So this, so it's a little bit depressing because it's very likely that we have a very uh, modified kind of history because we're only looking at uh, 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 possibly you know, recolonizations from these kind of islands to those kinds of islands um, in recent times. And so with that, uh, I'm going to summarize the Pacific was colonized up to three, sorry, four separate times if we include Petrophila. Uh, the Peperomia, uh, Pacific Peperomia Blanda appears to be a distinct lineage. Um, Hawaii has been colonized up to four separate times, and two of those times have given rise to their own respective radiations. And the species in the Pacific are fairly young, uh, uh, but the stem ages are older than current, um, the current high islands, suggesting past bottlenecks might have been might have played a really big role in shaping um, the diversity of many of these Pacific groups. All right, with that, I'll end. Um, and yes. Yeah. Can we, we just conclude with the, with the last talk and then... Um, I'll try and blast this real quick. Yeah.